Hello friends, it's me, Kayla. I'm here to tell you all of the books that I've added to my Goodreads in the last two months. I promise these videos are more interesting than they sound. Or maybe they're not, but you know what? If I inform one person about one upcoming book, then I've done something I've done something. It is cover reveal season. So there have been a lot of books that I've talked about in previous videos where I'm like, listen to this synopsis. Listen to this author's name. Doesn't it sound interesting? Let's wait and see the cover. And now we get to see the cover. Also, there have been cover reveals for books that I've absolutely never heard of and I just automatically added them to my TBR without reading the synopsis. So what I'm gonna do with you today is read 20 to 30 books out loud to you what they're about we're gonna decide together if we should read them <laughs> please tell me down below if you end up hearing about a book you've never heard of before and adding something to your tbr so let's get into it i saw this cover and i love it it's called black water sister by zen cho it actually has a couple different covers tell me which one you prefer i'm also like not gonna look at you because i'm reading so I'll be down here. I don't know if I've read this one before to you, but I just read the first line and it sounds exactly like something I would like. So I'm glad I have it. A reluctant medium discovers the ties that bind can unleash a dangerous power. In this compelling Malaysian set contemporary fantasy, contemporary fantasy, that's my jam. Also it's queer, so hold on. Jessamine is closeted, broke, and moving back to Malaysia, a country she left when she was a toddler. So when Jess starts hearing voices, she talks she chalks it up to stress but there's only one voice in her head and it claims to be the ghost of her estranged grandmother her grandmother was a spirit medium the avatar of a mysterious deity called the blackwater sister now she's determined to settle the score against a gang boss who has offended the god and she's decided jess is going to help her do it oh the author on twitter said it's a stressed zillennial lesbian who fights gods ghosts gangsters and grandmas in the 21st century Penang. I'm into it. Do you want to read it? Let me know. This one I think is like a sci-fi mystery. It's called The Other Me by Sarah Zakrich Jang. And it says an edge of your seat story of a failed artist who accidentally opens a door to an alternate reality where she never pursued her dreams and must uncover the forces behind the switch before time runs out. So it kind of gives me vibes of like the Gallery of Unfinished Girls, or uh, You Must Not Miss. I think the cover's fine. On her 29th birthday, Chicago artist Kelly steps through a door at a gallery opening and emerges in her Michigan hometown. Suddenly her life is unrecognizable. She's got 12 years of the wrong memories in her head and she's married to Eric, a man she barely knew in high school. Oh my. I love books that play with time, so this sounds great. Add it to your shelf, okay? Okay. There's also some books that probably got a cover a while ago, but I only just saw for the first time. So I'm also including them in this video. One of them is called Near the Bone by Christina Henry. And it says a woman trapped on a mountain attempts to survive more than one kind of monster in this dread inducing horror novel from the national best-selling author, Christina Henry. Maddie can't remember a time before she and William lived alone on the mountain together. She must never make him upset. But when Maddie discovers the mutilated body of a fox in the woods, she realizes they're not alone after all. There's something in the woods that wasn't there before, something that makes strange cries in the night, something with sharp teeth and claws. When three strangers appear on the mountaintop looking for the creature in the woods, Maddie knows their presence will anger William. Oh my. Oh, she wrote that like Alice in Wonderland vibe and the Red Riding Hood thing. This cover is much more up my alley than the other ones. I wonder if it's inspired by something. I love survival. I love outdoorsy stuff. I love the supernatural. So I'm going to read it. Are you? <laughs> then this book, which I was interested in, got a cover. And I don't love it, but I'm still going to read it because it's about a serial killer. It's called The Last House on Needless Street by Catri Catri Catrina. Catriona. This is the story of a serial killer, a stolen child, revenge, death, and an ordinary house at the end of an ordinary street. All these things are true, and yet they are all lies. You think you know what's inside the house on Needless Street. You think you've read the story before. That's where you're wrong. How vague. This actually only comes out like a month from now, but I only recently saw it. In the dark forest at the end of Needless Street lies something buried, but it's not what you think. Dot, dot, dot. 
what do you think? Do you think it's going to be great? Leave your votes down below of which of these I'm actually going to end up reading and which ones I'm going to like. This cover does everything for me and it's also out pretty soon. I think I might have found a list of upcoming horror releases because I'm trying to be more aware of horror. So I don't think these are actually like this couple aren't um, recently announced, but they're recent to me. You're okay with it. I know. It's called The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Meldovsky. She wrote a couple books that I haven't read, but I recognize the covers. I think I might have been sent one unsolicited as an ARC a long time ago. Okay, it says it's a thriller in the synopsis, but it's shelved a lot as horror, so. It says it's a twisty YA thriller that Scream meets Karen and McManus about a mysterious club with an obsession for horror. New girl Rachel is eager to make a fresh start at Manchester Prep, love prep school, love spooky stuff. Oh, and there's a prank war. As the pranks escalate, the competition turns cutthroat and takes on a life of its own. I'm gonna read it, even though, you know, YA thrillers aren't always my thing, YA horror is, so who knows how it's gonna go. Okay, this next one is an anthology that I'm really excited to read. It's called Dark Stars, New Tales of Darkest Horror. I've been waiting for the cover and I'm not disappointed. There are a bunch of authors in here that I've read from before, from Josh Mallerman to Stephen Graham Jones and Caroline Kepnes. I don't know if there's a specific theme besides just like horror, but it's just a whole bunch of short horror stories. Oh great, it says right here, Dark Stars is not themed, allowing each author to write their very best horror story, unhampered by the need to conform to any unifying tropes. Great. Okay, totally switching gears. There's this YA cover reveal for An Island Without You by Mulalani Moreno. And it says it's a heartfelt and thrilling YA novel about two boys struggling to find their place amidst a tragedy that rocks their community in Hawaii. It's about a character who had a bully and the bully has now left, but he's actually missing. And then we have another character who's trying to make friends, but it's hard with his selective mutism and the visions he's having about Spencer. Interesting. Okay, another short story collection that I have talked about a couple times is called Battle of the Bands. This has some authors I've read from before, Lauren Gobaldi, Eric Smith, uh, Brittany Cavallaro, Jay Coles, Katie Cotugno, Sean David Hutchinson, Ashley Poston, Jasmine Warga, a lot of people. 15 young adult authors and one real life rock star band together for one epic and interconnected take on a memorable high school rite of passage. I think I knew that the stories were connected, but I must have forgotten that because I just got really excited about it. Another short story collection is called This Is Our Rainbow, 16 stories of her, him, them, and us. I've talked about it a couple times, but we just got a cover. Some authors I read from before in here are Clarabella A. Ortega, Catherine Locke, Ashley Herring Blake, and it is a middle grade fiction anthology, which I think is so awesome, uh, with short stories, poetry, and comics all about LGBTQIA plus characters. Next is a cover very different than what I was expecting. Um, I was really excited about this book. It's called To Break a Covenant. It's by Allison Ames. And it was perfect. It said it was perfect for fans of Wilder Girls and Sock Hill Girls. And this is the one I told you about. Like, I probably would have put this on. I didn't do a five star prediction, so let me know if you still want to see like a five star predictions from me for 2021. But this probably would have been on it. The cover hasn't like ruined anything. It's just not what I expected it to look like, and now I like don't know how to feel about it. But it is the one set in Moon Basin. It's been haunted for as long as anyone can remember. It started with an explosion in the mine that killed 16 people. The disaster made it impossible to live in town, and then the town relies on its haunted reputation to bring in tourists. We're following two characters named Clem and Nina, and I think they're in a relationship. They're best friends, maybe more. And then there's a group of girls who decides to enter the mine together. I'm gonna pick it up. Okay, and then this one I talked about before. It's the one about the African tightrope dancer in Victorian London, and it's called The Bones of Ruin, and it now looks like it's part of a series. It's by Sarah Rowley. And basically the tightrope dancer, like, cannot die she has this like ability she then meets the dark and alluring adam temple a member of the mysterious order called the enlightenment committee the committee decides who lives and who doesn't the committee is holding a tournament of freaks a competition made up of vicious fighters and fantastical abilities adam wants iris 
seem here to be his champion and in return he promises her the one thing she wants most the truth about who she really is oh i i really want to read it next up is another book that plays with time and we just got the cover for it's called for all time by shanna miles and it says it's outlander meets the sun is also a star in this teen romance follows two lovers fated to repeat their story across hundreds of lifetimes who hope to break the cycle once and for all so i think we follow them for all of their like thousands of lives together they always fall in love they always fight to be together and then tamar and fayard fayard die over and over again perhaps at last they will learn what it takes to break the cycle oh that just sounds so fun okay then we got a cover for um the next sylvia marino garcia which is so beautiful like the colors and it's just a lot it's called velvet was the night like i didn't even have this on my radar because it is um like a historical fiction and perhaps has to do with fame but the cover is great okay so we're following a girl in 1970s mexico and her next door neighbor she's really envious of her life but then she disappears and she's trying to find out like the truth about where she ended up but she gets caught up with a shadowy figure goon squads um political activists and then there's a man who becomes obsessed with her and now they have to come together to discover the secrets behind this woman's disappearance they can no longer escape the danger that threatens to consume their lives with hitmen government agents and russian spies aiming to protect lenora's secrets i don't really understand what i just read but it's still pretty <laughs> Oh, and then I told you when All's Well, the cover came out, I told you that it scared me, it made me uncomfortable, and guess what? This isn't even the Canadian cover. So the Canadians, <laughs> us Canadians, we get our own cover, and it looks like this. At first I wasn't on board, but I, I think I might love it. Tell me which one you prefer, I'm dying to know. This is the one where there is a professor who's putting on the play All's Well That Ends Well, and then the cast kind of takes over and does whatever they want. And there's also some like weird, um, magical, I don't know, just weirdness going on because she meets these men who like know everything about her and then they do something and then she her chronic pain is gone. But then it has really bad effects on other things or other people. I really don't want to know too much about this book, but you should pre-order it because I'm going to make you read it with me. Next up, I love this cover. It's the upcoming Claire Can, and it's called The Marvelous. This is an exuberant YA novel following six teens locked together in a mansion contending for a life-changing cash prize in a competition run by a reclusive heiress. That's everything just everything I want. The heiress disappeared for a year and now she's made her dramatic return with an announcement she's chosen a few lucky golden rule users which is like YouTube basically so she's picked like vloggers or video creators to come to her private estate and now the players have to play a game told from the perspective of three dazzling players. I just like I need it so much. Okay next up I know that I sometimes say I'm not <laughs> like the most into YA contemporary and yet YA contemporary sneaks its way onto my reading lists. There's an upcoming Morgan Matson. I don't know for sure if I'm going to read it but I want to show you the cover. I don't know why. It's called Take Me Home Tonight and it says Ferris Bueller's Day Off meets Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist and that just sounds like so much fun. Two girls, one night, zero phones. Kat and Stevie, best friends, theater kids, polar opposites have snuck away from the suburbs to spend a night in New York City. I just feel like that's something a lot of you will vibe with. Over the course of a wild night in a city that never sleeps, both Kat and Stevie will get a wake-up call about their friendship, their choices, and finally discover what they really want for their future. Okay, and then I have a couple books that the covers are magnificent because they have my number one favorite cover element which is hands i can't explain it but i love it. it gets me every time this one is called summer suns by lee mandelo and it is a queer horror story it says andrew and eddie did everything together best friends bonded more deeply than brothers until eddie left andrew behind to start his graduate program at vanderbilt Six months later, only days before Andrew wants to join him in Nashville, Eddie dies of an apparent suicide. He leaves Andrew a horrible inheritance, a roommate he doesn't know, friends he never asked for, and a gruesome phantom with bleeding wrists that mutters of revenge. As Andrew searches for the truth about Eddie's death, he uncovers his lies and secrets left behind from the person he trusted most, discovering a family history soaked in blood and death. 
whirling between the backstabbing academic world where Eddie spends his days and the circle of hot boys, fast cars, and hard drugs that ruled Eddie's nights. The walls Andrew has built against the world begin to crumble, letting in the phantom that hungers for him. <laughs> that just, that just does it for me. The cover, it's so good. And then this one also has spooky hands and it's called The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling. This is another horror book. 2021. Haven't read a horror yet, but it's my year of horror, I've decided. Practical, unassuming Jane Shoringfield has done the calculations and decided that the most secure path forward is this, a husband in a marriage of convenience who will allow her to remain independent and occupied with meaningful work. Her first choice, the dashing but reclusive Dr. Augustine Lawrence agrees to her proposal, but only one condition, that she must never visit Lindridge Hall, his crumbling family manor outside town. I don't think I've actually read this synopsis, yet on their wedding night, an accident strands her at his door in a pitch black rainstorm and she finds him changed. Gone is the bold, courageous surgeon and in his place, a terrified, paranoid man, one who cannot tell reality from nightmares and fears Jane is an apparition come to haunt him. I don't want to read anymore. Um, it sounds... Mm, this crimson peak inspired story, story assembles, then appends every expectation set in place by Shirley Jackson and Rebecca, and will leave the reader shaken, desperate to begin again as soon as they're finished. Oh shit! Okay, let's keep it going with the spooky stuff because Kendara Blake has an upcoming book called All of These Bodies. It says 16 bloodless bodies, two teenagers, one impossible explanation. It starts with a lone victim found on his front porch with his throat cut and his body drained of blood. By the time it's over, the bloodless murders leave a trail of 16 bodies littered across the Midwest with no suspects and no witnesses. Michael Jensen yearns to become a journalist and escape his small town life. There's a 15 year old suspect named Marie Catherine Hale and they work together to figure something out. Interesting. That cover just came out like a couple days ago and I only then became aware of that book, but I'm, I'm gonna read it. And then this book is called The Plot. The cover is interesting. It's by Jean Hanf, Correlates, and it is about a young novelist and his professor becomes obsessed with the book that he's writing and then assuming he's never actually going to finish the book he like steals the whole idea and writes the book himself or something so the guy who stole the book is now wealthy famous praised and read all over the world but that at the height of his glorious new life an email arrives the first salvo in a terrifying anonymous campaign. You're a thief, it says. As Jake struggles to understand his antagonist and hide the truth from his readers and his publishers, he begins to learn more about his late student. And what he discovers both amazes and terrifies him. What is the real story behind the plot and who stole it from whom? And then I have a couple things without covers. I might have talked about this one before, but I'm gonna do it again. It's called Mercury Boys by Chandra Prasad. History and speculative collide with the modern world when a group of high school girls form a secret society. Love a secret society. After discovering they can communicate with boys from the past. Yes. Okay, so we've got a new girl at school. She discovers a vial of liquid mercury, touches something, makes a discovery. She can visit the man in the portrait. She shares that with some of her classmates and they've each formed a bond with their own Mercury boys. It sounds very interesting. Okay, the next one is called The Space Between Loneliness and Fear by Jennifer Mason Black. It says for fans of Last Seen Leaving and Sadie, since last year's cyberbullying incident, Sarah spends her days at home alone with her virtual school assignments. Until the day she discovers WeRemember.org together with a homeschool girl down the street, Sarah follows a trail of a missing boy, uncovering details that never appeared in the official report. So another YA mystery that I'm, I'm gonna pick up. <laughs> I need to stop. Oh, the next one, also a mystery. <laughs> never Saw Me Coming by Vera Kurian. Why did I add this one? I don't know if I've even ever read this. A calling girl named Chloe, she has an IQ of 135, is about to enter John Adams College with an unusual scholarship. It includes tuition, room and board, and a smartwatch to track her moods and movements, but her scholarship isn't based on good grades, just her diagnosis as a psychopath. Is this okay? The multi-method psychology panel study based at Adams gives seven undergrads a free ride through college in exchange for donating their time and bodies to science. 
therapy sessions, MRI scans, experiments, anything to help the field of clinical psychology study the little understood diagnosis. Chloe joins the study because it puts her at the same school as her childhood friend Will, who grievously wronged her and has no idea that Chloe has spent her last six years pl plotting revenge. So at least it's an adult thriller. Next up, Kimberly McCrate has an upcoming book, which I'm very excited about reading anything from her. This one's called Friends Like These. It says a desperate intervention brings together a group of college friends 10 years after graduation. I love the plot of the trope where a murder happened 10 years ago and then we find out the truth. Five friends end up in the cat skills. We did have the best of intentions, especially after what happened to Alice all those years ago. In the end, maybe that's what caught up with us. That and the fact that we're such a complicated group so much history and so many big personalities. Secrets too. Very vague, but yeah, I'm gonna read it. And then Tobley McSmith has an upcoming book called Act Cool. I'm very interested to see the cover. Um, this one says a transgender teen is accepted into a prestigious performing arts school in New York, but when he's cast in a role that hits too close to home, the part of a trans teen whose family is intent on conversion therapy, he must learn how to be true to himself apart from the role. Maybe I've read, I don't think I've read that to you before, but it sounds familiar. I think there might be another book on my 2021 TBR that has like a similar focus of like joining a play, but being cast in a role that like makes things like challenging and like reflective of your identity. I wonder what that was. Okay, and then I have another short story collection, of course. This one's called Out There. And I think it might be a space one, but there is no synopsis. Um, it's by Sandra Mitchell. I always pick up those anthologies. Uh, Kay Ingram, Mason Deaver, Claire Can, Alicia Dow, Leah Johnson. This is like the third and final book in the All Out series. Oh, they're all set in the future. Okay, so that's what they have in common because the original one was in the past and then that one is in the present and then this one is in the future is that what's happening okay great let me see if i have anything that i have like tweeted recently that i have forgotten to add to my goodreads that we should go over oh yeah okay so there is a ya latinx horror anthology coming out soon called our shadows have claws well, soon, it's 2022. These short stories feature mythical monsters and magical baddies from Latinx folklore, from El Chupacabra to La Llorona, The Vampire and the Werewolf, some authors I've read from before, Taylor K. Mejia, Clarabella Ortega, Lillian Rivera, and then a whole bunch of people I've never heard of. Exciting! I have way too many short story collections already on my TBR shelf, and even more that I wanna read in the next year, so. Oh, I think maybe that's it. Okay, let me know if I told you about anything you didn't already know about, anything that you want to read, anything you think I should know about. I might have already talked about it in like earlier episodes <laughs> of this series. Um, maybe I'll put a playlist down below. I don't know why you'd want to go through that, but in case you want to know about more 2021 things, I have lots of videos where I just read synopses out loud. So I'll see you later. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.